Sechi and um, I think I need different music for this video. Yeah, I'm actually scripting a video for once, mostly because if I did this without a script, I'd probably sound like a complete idiot. I've got so much info to cover and opinion shit, so well, script it is. I mean, writing this has meant I had to take a break from my multi-day binge of death mode, but uh, it's nice to listen to Scandal. Good break from the dulcet tones of Maximum the Hormone. Sorry this is two, day two days late. What, first attempt footage corrupted, second attempt the audio was awful, so third time's a charm. So last Monday, I finally got my order from CD Japan, the uh, t-shirt edition of Scandal's latest album, Honey. The t-shirt is white, a little on the tight side, so it's best one tucked in or under things, but it's a good t-shirt. Um, I've also got this t-shirt from the Hello World CD, and it's a similar quality to that. As you can see, I'm wearing it now. Uh... Yeah, well at least it should be. Ah oh, well, this isn't reviewing a t-shirt, it's reviewing an album, so let's get to that. Honey is Scandal's 8th studio album, and the first one coming after the, their 10th anniversary best CD collection, which I also own. And honestly, just going off the singles from it, Take Me Out, Close Little Universe, Bugatti, and Platform Syndrome, it was shaping up to be one of my favourites. All four of those songs are amongst my favourite by the band, and it's a great step forward after Hello World, the first album where the majority of the songs were written by the band, and the nostalgic sounding Yellow which, while a good album, does sound extremely familiar as a Western fan. But it's also extremely important, as it's the first album Scandal has complete creative control over. This album is Scandal taking what they had learned on Yellow and mixing those lessons with their previous sound to bring their strongest album to date. Out of the ten songs, eight of them are written by the usual tag team of guitarist Mummy on music and drummer Rina on lyrics, one song is written entirely by Mummy, and one song is written entirely by Bassist Tomori. I ordered it off CD Japan, as I said earlier, and it took around two weeks to get here. I got the cheapest shipping, so no tracking or insurance for it. All translations mentioned are of Scandal Heaven, full credit in the description. Along with that, time codes for all the individual songs are below in case you want to skip to a certain one. On to the song. The album starts with a bang. Platform Syndrome is a lively breakup song, and a great way to start an album. I really like how it sounds. From the intro, which features guitar chords panning from side to side, to the main riff into the verses. From what I know, this is the first time Mummy got hurt enough to write her own guitar part, and well, it sounds great. And it has an awesome chorus. It's a breakup song, as I said earlier, but it's a we've broken up and I still love you, but I'm not gonna try and win you back, I'm gonna move on with my life song, which, oh my god, thank you. Fuck. If there's any sort of breakup song I hate, it's the you dumped me or I dumped you. But I want you back. Like, seriously, do make a decision like that, stick to it. Is this the one? So, lyrically, it's great. It's a song about, well, I realize it's over. I've been a shitty person. I still love you but I'm going to move on with my life. And musically, the high energy and rather upbeat tone contrasts with some of the lyrics but it works really well, giving a rather optimistic feel to it. Hanada is using a higher vocal register than she normally does for this song, and it sounds amazing. Don't have a ton to say about it, but god I love this song. Surprisingly, the song titled Over is in fact a breakup song. Yes, another one. Okay, I might poke fun at them for writing a fuck ton of love songs and breakup songs, but honestly, they do them well. Kagero, which is from the Indie Days, is, well, it's not a breakup song per se, but it is about a shitty, presumably romantic relationship. It's one of my favourites by the bat. Also see their major debut single, Doll, which, again, is one of my favourite songs by the band because I love you but I can't be the idolised doll you want, mixed with awesome music. They have endless songs about relationships, but god, the vast majority of them are well written musically and lyrically. <sighs> they rarely have any really transparently fake love songs, and the breakup songs always have enough details in, about the relationship in them to sound good to reality. Over continues this tradition by sounding absolutely awesome. Is it better than my favourite breakup song? Well, well, not so much of a breakup, I mean, 
the map of Thorn? Onagai Navigation. Yes, because holy crap, Over is a powerful song. Onagai Navigation of Hello World is the answer song to Awanai Tsumori no Genki Kane of Standing. So I think we can talk about that. So a couple break up in what seems like a rather casual way. I don't plan on seeing you again. Take care. So, obviously, it stays like that. No. Nope. <laughs> Cut to on a guy navigation and get me out of here. Somewhere far away where we'll never see each other again and there's no one who knows about us. So, as you can see, a calm and mature reaction to a breakup. Though, it does have the beauty of self-awareness, as seen in the second verse. Over, on the other hand, is sadder and has a feeling of remorse and regret. Our love was more than ordinary, but I wasn't able to change. It's a song that's saying, I wish I could have been a better person. I wish we could have lasted forever, but I blew it and I know it. And God, that's not the way. Even if you haven't been in a romantic relationship, you probably know what it's like. The music works well with mood. Mami's a great lead guitarist, and her use of effects pedal has been tired and that's like a powerful song. Mixed with Vina's drumming, Timo's bass, and Haruna's vocals and rhythm, it's one of their best songs today. And it's great to see how far they've come, even in just the five years I've been into them. High part of the song is Mami Solo. Not gonna play it, terrified of the copyright thoughts, but you need to hear it. <laughs> Take Me Out is one of my favorite songs by Scandal. The single came out in 2016, the same year I graduated high school, and Scandal's 10th anniversary as a band. 2016 was also important to me because it marks 10 years since I moved back to Australia from the UK. And also 10 years I left the school, it was a combined time high school. So the song coming out around that time, there's a reason I chose to sing it at my graduation. Uh, you can tell a lot about a song's quad by listening to it without the melody. And fortunately for me, the single came out with an instrumental. I'm pretty sure Mummy used a delay pedal for the intro riffs, and it's just so many layers to it, it makes it such a, um, uh, stalker. Fails. Cool experience listening to it. Are you in English? Also, lyrically, it's a love song, big surprise. But it's a love in the, I want to know more about you, I want to do things with you, like find paradise and look at the sky way over the insert tab A into slot B way, which makes more sense to me. I mean, I might hate a lot of humanity, but even I have people I like spending time with. And like being together, playing games together, contemplating the best way to overthrow the government together, sewing and talking, all that stuff. I mean, what's the point of love that bad company? You, I'm getting sappy next song. <laughs> oh no, it's a song with a very relatable message. Oh no, I caught the feelings. Make it stop, make it stop. What the fuck? I don't even know this person. Fuck it, I wanna date you. Please notice me. I'm not entirely dead inside, just mostly. The song gives me a pop punk vibe. The upbeat guitar, fast drums, it's a great listen. I'm pretty sure it's a love song or a notice me senpai song. Look for them well. Unlike the rest of the songs on the album, this one is sung by Dream Girl guitarist Mami Sasazaki. And I really love her voice. It's not on the nasal side, it can get pretty shrill, but god, I love it. It's got an interesting tone to it. The upbeat energy and fast pace of the song work well with it. She's got a unique voice, but it's on that versatile. I mean, she's got this, she's got the beautiful co which was voted by the fans as the second best song they ever made. A really emotional track about moving on and wondering if someone still thinks of them. And it can be read as both platonic and romantic, which is awesome. The amazingly sweet Honoyomu. A song about reading a book, sharing the experience of reading with someone. Oh my god, it's such a, an emotional song. I love it. The song is standard, but it's a bit of a strange song, so... Uh... Also, I think Shoujo M was sung by Mami, but I have no idea. So, out of the other songs with Mami on the main vocals, how does it write? Right. Oh, that's a good song. It's just up against two of my favorites by the band. So, most of this song is sung by John Rena, with Havana singing the chorus. I'm always happy to hear Rena sing. She's got such a sweet voice, and the last song I can remember her singing. I asked me of Hello World is to go with her voice, a really sweet song. Musically, this is also cool sounding. The singer paid a drum beat, the palm muted chords, nicely building up to a chorus for a nice disco feel, Mum's got a water pedal going. 
It's got a disco beat, standard one they tend to use, that one, but not complaining. It also seems to have a keyboard going for some of it, which is, always sounds cool. Also, I love the effects they have on Mummy's guitar during the verse. I love a good ambient lead. Lyrically, I'm pretty sure it's a love song, but I mean for the love song and the song about searching for yourself. Eh, not the most interesting, apart from the comparison between Vina and the Strawberry and the Shortcake. Oh god, honestly, that's really cute. Another song sung by them. I'm so happy to hear Vina sing again, because she has such a sweet voice, and it's proof how versatile the band Scandal is. Short Shot is a love song. Or the breakup song. Both? Both. It's softer than most of the other ones on the album. A little slower, but it's a sweet song. Pardon me the guitar riffs, patterns in the verse. The mummy of Blondie a little, mostly hard of glass. The twinkly, I think it's a glockenspiel or similar instrument. Playing in unison with Harlan as lead melody has such a sweet lay to it. I'm generally not the biggest fan of slow songs. I like my music fast and loud. But this song just gives me the warm fuzzies. Again, I'm not entirely dead inside, just mostly. It's such a dreamy sounding song that even if it's not the happiest lyrically, I can't help but feel happy listening to it. Again, I don't have tons to say about it, but it's just a really sweet song. This sounds like it could be the ending song to a romance anime. Not that that's a bad thing, it's just not always my thing. This is slower, more pop, less energetic, a nice calm love song. I tend to prefer my um, love songs on the faster side, more energy, more emotion. They've got a few really good ones on this album, some other great ones on other albums. Love Me Do of Yellow comes to mind. Not saying the song's bad, it's just not really my thing. One of me associating a ton of subtext with this song because it came out on the same EP as Coastal Universal, which I love, but really affected my way of looking at the song because, um, they gay. More on that later. This song is beautiful. From the first chords, building up into the riff, to the outro, every part of this song is amazing. It's around a similar type of love to Take Me Out, the I want to be with you type of love, but it's also like a love that's built on an extremely strong emotional connection between two people and how they feel safe together. They could go anywhere and have it be for them. Let's go someone, somewhere unknown, just the two of us. And since it came out on the same EP as Koi Sodo Universe, I can't help but think of as a gay love song. And while a lot of the praise I have for Koi Sodo Universe and Fatali is similar, and will be covered in more detail in that section of the review, what I can say is that they're both extremely well-written love songs that don't fall into a lot of the traps that um, queer love songs, especially done by Japanese artists, tend to fall into. Musically, um, Fatali's more laid back than Take Me Out or Coast of the Universe, but it's still fast. Vina's drumming keeps tempo and energy rather high. The high pitch of Mummy's leads contrasts with the lower pitch of Harana's rhythm guitar and Tomori's bass and just works so well together. Okay, no other way to put it. This song is fucking amazing. Scandal's awesome at the faster paced dance rock songs. Look at flashback number five. It was a B-side, a B-side to stamp. And it made the fan voted Scandal best CD. I mean, I definitely like it more than stamp. Hell, even everybody say yeah of Temptation Box, their second album, proves this. If, if they want to play a song that rocks, but also makes you want to get up and dance, they can, they will, and it will be fucking awesome. Again, I think it's a love song, or a sex song? Um, I have no idea, again, people are gross and I don't get them, but musically, holy crap, it's a fucking atom bomb. From all the guitar licks and patterns, like so many of their songs it uses a disco beat, this one again, I mean with like, other uh, ornamentation, but that's the basic one, which just adds here to the energy. Tomomi's a great bassist, and the little solo she has really showcases it. Though when in doubt and you need a bass line for something like this, you cannot go wrong with octaves. Mummy, like always, is epic on the guitar, 
and Hadley's really proved that. Half the reason the song sounds so cool is all the cool textural stuff, with the lead guitar and the vocals really playing that up. I probably sound like a broken record at this point, but I love Polyphony. It's like the tips on my top three of things I really like in music. Guitar gymnastics, cool sounding effects, Polyphony. Also, Harris West has a really cool effect on it at times, and I, again, really like stuff, stuff like that. <laughs> on to the last track. Quest of the Universe, if the name didn't give it away, is a love song. Yes. Again. But oh my god, it's an amazing one. Now, I probably shouldn't do this, but fuck it. My video, I do what I want. I am not gonna lie, the music video plays a huge part in my interpretation of the song. But also, like, holy fucking shit, there is no way in hell that I am straight enough to watch Mami Sasazaki kiss another girl and not want to trade places with the girl she's kissing. Like, oh my god, I already got a bit of a quiff vibe from Mami, but this wasn't fucking helping! Ah! Because taking that into account, so many songs, especially by Japanese artists, about girls loving girls, play it up into this, well, Scandal! This immoral secret that cannot be shared, but fuck's sake, I love you, let's kiss. Quest of the Universe manages two amazing feats. It's an honest sound from the last song written in the second person, and it's one of the most upbeat and innocent songs about girls loving girls I've ever come across. There's no, we're both girls, so what we're doing is wrong, or I got drunk and kissed the girl. Her work boyfriend doesn't mind. Instead, what we've got is, we talk to each other until morning. They're all silly conversations, but it's strangely fun when I'm with you, and ah, uh, the universe and love, even God can't get in the way of the pair drawn to each other. All the cutesy romantic crap in, and in so many songs makes me want to hurl works in this one. Am I biased so, because I'm about as straight as a rainbow and have one hell of a crush on Mami Sasazaki? Yeah. Do I care? Not particularly. Also, not gonna lie, this song sounds amazing. It's well written, whoever mixed it is a genius, and well, all the little guitar flicks and riffs, it's such a satisfying song to listen to. <coughs> now, onto my favourite from the album, Electric Girl. Scandal does fast paced dance rock really well, and this song's a great example of this. Quest of the Universe, Over, Fatali, Take Me Out, and Platform Syndrome are also amazing. It's an extremely strong album, seriously, I really like every song on an album. And even the songs I like less are still ones I'd be happy to listen to. Overall, I think Scandal's Honey is the best album they've done to date, going off how the vast majority of their songs on it are extremely strong, and they found a more unique sound to Yellow. It's awesome to see how far they've come in the 11 years they've been a band, and it's a great album to come out on the 10th anniversary year of their major debut. I'm looking forward to whatever they make to come, and I'm definitely glad to call them one of my favourite bands. Scandal's Honey is available on Spotify, iTunes, CD Japan. Videos for Take Me Out, Quest of the Universe, and Platform Syndrome are all available either on Scandal's official YouTube channel, if you're in Japan, or Scandal's Vivo channel, if you're not in Japan. Do all the YouTube person stuff people ask you to do, and I'll see you again probably later this week, actually, since it's so late. Well, at least I hope I do. You're starting me up again soon, so I think it is. Uh, so, I'm Sachi. Uh, thanks for watching, I guess, and, um, bye! <laughs>